possible to lose your, your place in the spirit, in the kingdom of heaven, as far as you operating in your weapons and operating in your strength and operating in your consistency. So the blood of Jesus, it is a dimension of the power of God. That when you move with the blood of Jesus, you receive an impartation to not sin. To not make mistakes. For you to move with the blood of Jesus, it requires effort. And every weapon of the spirit requires effort. That's why many people don't move in the weapons of the spirit, the weapons of their warfare, because people are saying, no, you don't have to do anything. You just let it happen. That's not how the weapons work. No weapon of the spirit, no weapon of your warfare just happens by you just letting it happen. You have to put in effort. When you see Apostle Paul no longer persecuting the church, he's making efforts to remain in the grace of God, to remain in the spirit of God, to remain in the weapons of his warfare. He's making an effort. He's not just letting his life go the way that it is going. He's making an effort. That's why when you see the text where Apostle Paul is saying, you cast down vain imagination. He's saying, put in the effort. Take every thought into captivity. He's saying, put in the effort. And so put in an effort is where you are aware that you, you have to engage the advantages that you've been given. You have to engage them. You have to plant yourself inside of them. You have to use them consistently. Look what it says here in Colossians chapter 2. Look what it says here in verse 6. It says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. But look what it says in verse 7. It says, rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith. As you have been taught, I'll explain this, abounding therein with thanksgiving. I want to explain this text to you real fast. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, it says, As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. What does it mean to walk in Christ Jesus? What does it mean to walk? In Christ Jesus. Walking in Christ Jesus means that I am taking my decisions and I'm making my decisions respect the Holy Spirit's voice, impressions, his counsels, his convictions, his instructions. I'm making my decisions respect him. I'm not going to go to the barbecue because I'm invited to go to the barbecue. I'm walking in him. So if he does not want to walk to a barbecue, I will not be there even if people question me and interrogate me and talk about me and disown me and say bad things about me. That's not going to influence me to stop walking in him. Walking in him means that I become an unselfish person. It's no longer about me, my image, and what people will say about what I do. It becomes about how is the Holy Spirit, how is he seeing me deal with this day, with this moment, with this season, with this temptation? What is the Holy Spirit looking to see out of me? Walking in him. Now, saints, I, I, I want to show you something that's so simple, but just think about this. Walking is a verb. It's an action of exercise. People walk to get their heart right because they want a healthy heart. 
They walk because they want exercise. They want to lose uh, uh, toxic weight. Okay, look at this. When it says walk in him, it's saying exercise. Give me effort. You, are you catching this? This, this, is, this is important. It, you, you can't say I'm going walking for about 10 minutes and not exert effort. You got to take your foot. You got to walk. You got to walk. And you got to walk. So when the Bible says walk in him, that means the things that are in Christ Jesus, love, peace, joy, overcoming sin, perfection, wisdom, understanding, discernment, truth, Faithfulness, consistency, studying, prayer, 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 praise, thanksgiving, self-control, patience. All these things that's in him is saying exercise them and put effort into doing what is in Christ Jesus. Utilize all your energy in doing it. See, I'm showing you something. I'm showing you something. So when the Bible says walk in him, it's saying use your effort and exercise what is in the personality of Christ. Make it your objective to exercise and to utilize your effort in bearing the fruit of Christ's personality, his mindset. His disciplines. Now look what it says right here in verse 7. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Look what it says. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith. Now what does this mean? Being rooted and built up. Do you know what rooted and built up is signifying? When something is rooted that means that there's deep ties in connection. That this is the source of why something is appearing. So the, the, the root of a tree, now you can see the tree in the leaves and the branches, but the root is underneath the ground. Now, what is the ground of everybody? Your heart. So it's saying that the root of your heart the source of your heart and how your heart is operating, it must be Jesus. It must be Jesus. The Lord must be the one at the source of how your heart is operating. So when your heart gets troubled, that's not Jesus as the root. That's not what his root does. His root does not make your heart bitter. His root does not make your heart fearful. His root does not make your heart lustful or proud or arrogant or unteachable. His root does not make your heart. It doesn't, the source, if the source of your heart, if the root of your heart is Jesus, you will not be hard-headed. You won't be focused on things that deteriorate you and make you worried and stressed out. So now you understand when the word of God is saying, Colossians 2, 7, be rooted and built up in him. If we don't even deal with built up, let's deal with rooted. Is the source of the operation of your heart, Jesus. So now you see in John chapter 14, why is he telling the disciples, let not your heart be troubled? He's saying, let not your heart have another root system other than me because I'm not making your heart get troubled. I'm not pitting those thoughts to circulate in your brain that make you scared and make you overthink and make you anxious and make you lose composure and make you void of calmness. It's not me. So now you understand why the Bible is constantly saying, let the peace of God rule in your heart and mind. It's really saying, be rooted in him. And the ground is your heart. The root must be Jesus. He's underneath that heart, causing it to appear as a tree of life.
That's some powerful poetry that I'm giving you. That's some powerful poetry. If you if you caught that, that's amazing. Uh, the whole roundup and then the combination, this compound revelation, you that's real poetry what I'm giving you so that you can understand it. You're seeing that your your heart is really the ground, and Jesus is supposed to be the root. And and just like a tree has the roots that you can't see, but it, it is the source of why that tree grows up and now you see branches and leaves. The same way your your heart is supposed to be the 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 ground and Jesus underneath the ground, inspiring the ground to bear forth a tree of life. You hear the word saying that a good tree can't bear evil fruit. The, the word actually saying that when you become a good tree, you can't do nothing wrong. And doing nothing, when I say you can't do nothing wrong, that don't mean, okay, I'm going to do wrong, but I'm going to still deny that it was wrong. No, no, no. When you become a good tree, that means that you have applied yourself, your heart, your soul, to be led by the Holy Spirit. And you'll let him lead you. See, um, uh, I made up in my mind I was going to be a, a, a vessel um, that's underneath the guidance and possession and the influence of the Holy Spirit at all times. So I don't let people decide what I do. My decisions are backed a million percent. By the understanding that I have that the Holy Spirit is the captain. So even if I want to do something, I'm always patient. If I want to say something, I'm always patient. If I want to go somewhere, I'm always patient. Because the Holy Spirit is going to feel respected in his role as God. In the placement of of this body on earth. But see, that's what you call being rooted in him. Now, what is being built up in him? So being rooted in him means that he's the source of your heart. What's being built up in him? What, what does that mean? Being built up in him. Now, we are now going from the place of you doing the right thing to enjoying the right thing. Being built up is where you no longer saying, I'm, I'm here in Chicago because God put me here, but I'm holding on. No, no, no. That's not somebody that's built up in him. When you're built up in him, you no longer even, you don't have two streams in your words. Like, you know, some people say, you know, if God didn't want me here, I sure wouldn't be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this, but God want me that's two streams flowing out of person. Because um, in, in one stream, they're saying, I'm here for the Lord. But in another stream, they're saying, I don't want to be here. So they don't understand. They just release to the spirit world an uh, oxymoron, a double-mindedness, an uh, instability. Now, now they, have actually, uh, they have actually placed a period of time where they will be unstable in all their ways. Because how could you let that come out of your mouth and not think that a demon spirit is going to hear you say that and say, oh, you don't want to be there. Okay, so I'm going to magnify more devices so that you not wanting to be there will become what calibrates your decision. What cultivates you to the, the next choice to leave. Because remember, you don't really want to be here. You're talking about you here for God. So being built up in him is really understanding the assignment. Being built up in him means that I am using all of my weapons. Therefore, my soul is prosperous. It's successful. And it's not letting a thought pattern enter into it that will cause me to compromise what I have produced. I'm not going to reduce myself. I'm not going to decline. 
in my mentality. Just think about this. Being built up in him is the joy of salvation. Being built up in him is the joy of salvation. When you're built up in him, the joy of salvation is in operation. So not only are you delivered from wrong people, but you enjoy being delivered from them. Not only are you delivered from, from, from a, a, a wrong company, but you are enjoying the deliverance from the wrong company. No longer are you delivered from that toxic relationship, but you enjoy the deliverance from that toxic relationship. No longer, uh, not only are you set free from watching that, but you enjoy that you no longer watch it. That's what it means to be built up in him. Many people are not built up in Jesus. So they don't have the, 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 the level of endurance to keep the way of God because they're not built up. And anything can come and just snatch them away. So let me show you something from now on. Nobody has ever chased you from your job, and nobody has ever chased you from your assignment. You can only leave anything that you're assigned to do because you wasn't built up in Jesus in that assignment, which means that you wasn't enjoying Jesus. Because if you're enjoying Jesus, nothing shall separate you from the love of God. But if you could be separated, that means that you didn't even enjoy the person that you're being separated from. Let me give you an explanation. If a wife and a husband say that they're separated, do, would you say that they're enjoying each other? No. When women and men separate and they, they say, uh, are you with your husband still? No, I'm, we separated. Are you with your wife still? No, we separated. Separation doesn't, it doesn't magnify pleasure. It magnifies actually pain. So separation means that I don't enjoy this person. They don't enjoy me. And so we have come to an agreement that we don't want to be in each other's presence, living and, 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 and together and commingling with each other and co-working with each other and, and, and having um, uh, togetherness with each other. So separation, is, is, it means that there is a disliking between two individuals. Now watch this. The Bible said that, Nothing shall separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Now, if you are able to get separated, is it because that you enjoy Jesus? Is it because that you enjoy the Holy Spirit? No. Backsliding means I don't enjoy learning this righteousness. I want to go back to unrighteousness because this is what I enjoy. You know, oftentimes you meet people say that they're tired of sin. They're not tired of sin. They're tired, but not of sin. Because if they're tired of sin, they will stop doing it. They are tired. That's one thing. Because being tired is the result of what sin does to the brain. Because your brain wasn't created to sin against God. Your brain wasn't created to do the things that God gets hurt by. Your brain wasn't created to disrespect the Holy Spirit. So when you do it, your brain is not going to be energized. That's why most people in the world, they are not even just sinning without any substance. They are on drugs. They're drinking stuff. They are in pills. They are always intoxicated, always smoking. Why are they always doing that? Because their brain is not happy. It's not joyful. It is tired. You notice that when people live a sinful life, they always got to smoke. They always got to drink. They always got to party. They always got to have people around them. They always got to be doing something to be seen. They always got to be confrontational, dramatic. They always got to be feuding. They always got to be in conflict. They always got to be in drama. They always got to be jealous of somebody. They always got to be doing it. See, sin it doesn't make anybody happy. It doesn't make anybody joyous. What it does is, is Satan giving you a temporary thrill that you're wayward and that you're rebellious and you have no system of restraint or rebuke or authority that could check you. And that widespread of looseness ends up with 
heartache and pain and damages and emptiness and losses and defeats and sorrows. And so what is the major thing that the enemy wants to do with everybody is have them so involved with not being built up in Jesus. So even if Jesus calls you and picks you and say, here you are, you don't even have the right spirit for what you've been called to do. And when I say right spirit, I'm talking about your attitude, your approach. There's people, they come to a ministry, they got relationships, they got men, they got women, they talk to these people, they know they're not supposed to talk to them, but they keep on talking to them. And they're demon possessed and they're doing nothing about the demon possession. And there's coming a day where you're not going to have a chance to change none of this. You're not going to have a chance to hear Prophet Joshua Holmes talking to you. You're not going to have a ha chance to hear the gospel being preached where you could turn from your sin. But while you're hearing it, you're given a chance because demons, they always have a time where they will cut off people that are saying yes to them. They always have a time. Demons are not friends to you. The demon that gives you a lollipop wants to pop you. The demon that gives you a band-aid wants to make God look like he's abusive. The demon that calls 911 for you is actually the one that's causing the emergency. And it's funny how so many times there is a breach in someone even recognizing the spirits that I'm listening to are waiting for the correct time to cut me off. They're waiting for the right time to reel me into their destiny, which is eternal hell. Hell is a place where people that listen to spirits that was already damned to that place, they enter that place and they have to live with those spirits forever. And one of the torments of hell is that even though you knew that Jesus loved you, you will know that you rejected Jesus and you have no affiliation with Jesus, that your real family is demons. Your real family is demons and, and you will know demons are my brothers and those are my sisters and that is my mother and that is my father and these are my gods. And see, on earth, you might say, oh, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. But when you go to hell, you'll recognize Jesus is Lord. But my lords that I pick was these ugly monsters that are terrorizing me and bruising me and fighting me and raping me and demeaning me and disrespecting me and spitting on me and taking me as a prisoner against my will to do stuff that I thought that I would never have to face. And you don't have no time that it's going to stop. It's not going to stop after 10 years. It's not going to stop after 20 years. It's not going to stop after 30 years. It's not going to stop after 50 years. 5,000 years happen and you're still going to be in hell. 5 million years happen and still going to be in hell. People talking about mental, he mental health and getting free of mental problems. You can't get free from no mental problems because you start avoiding stuff that seems dramatic and hard and difficult and problematic. And, oh, I don't want to go through that. That's not how you get to mental health. Mental health is repenting from your sin and learning to submit yourself to the will of God and learning how to follow instructions the first time that is given to you. That that's how you become an advocate for your mental health. When you want your mind to be restored, you got to go back to the storehouse of heaven and say, Lord, I'm sorry for not listening to you. I want to listen to you. Give me your grace afresh. Anoint me afresh to listen to you. Anoint me afresh to serve you. Anoint me afresh to obey you. Anoint me afresh to pray for you, uh, pray to you. Anoint me afresh to give you praise. Anoint me afresh to give you glory. Anoint me afresh to sanctify myself. Anoint me afresh to study your word. Anoint me afresh to focus. Anoint me afresh to say no to evil and shun the very appearance of evil. And people, people oftentimes, they missing it. They missing it. How long you been on the earth? Oh, I've been on the earth 20 years. Wow, that's an extremely long time. That is an extremely long time. And just think about this. Um, uh, while you're on the earth 20 years, 
if you die at 20 years, the whole point is not, oh, 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 well, well, Lord, I didn't know that I was supposed to do this. And I didn't know I was supposed to uh, master this. And I didn't know what the real question going to be. Why did you take 20 years from me and you didn't even seek me to find it out? Oh, oh, oh you, you freely took my 20 years. You, you took the time I gave you. You took the moments I gave you. And you was unwilling to pursue the one that gave it to you. So, so that sounds like a thief and a robber. You taking the time of somebody else. You didn't create the time. You didn't birth the time. You didn't create your fingers, your body parts, your eyes, your ears. And you was willing to take what someone else created and not ask them what they wanted to do with what they created. 